Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Como usualmente hacemos, vamos a esperar unos minutos para que los compañeros se puedan unir. Hola. Sí, como usualmente hacemos, vamos a esperar unos minutos para que los otros compañeros se puedan unir. Okay. Good.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you. I hope you had a very nice weekend and uh, I hope everything goes well. Uh, let's see. Okay. Se pareciera que la gripe anda atacando, ¿verdad? Hay varios compañeros enfermos. Okay. I hope you feel better. So. And uh, as usual, first thing that we will do is to check about the uh, platform here. So this is the class of tonight. And uh, here you will see a little question about that one. Tonight, we're going to finish the first week. So next thing that we will do is to check the attendance as usual. Álvaro Ernesto Alvarado Reyes. Good evening. Okay, welcome. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martinez. Blanca Ruth Orantes Galdames. No problema con el audio. I'm sorry. Okay. Brenda Jamilet Bonilla de Villatoro. Ah, ok, perfecto, ya lo tengo. Sí. Carlos Alberto sí, Domínguez problema. Martínez. Eh, dije, presidente, teacher, no sé si tomó ahí <ríe> que está hablando junto al compañero a la vez. Ah, sí, sí, ya la tengo, gracias. Ok. Good. Eh, uh... Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Present teacher. Good. Daniel Eduardo García López. Edwin Antonio Quinteros Umaña. Eulice Torres Torres. Present. Good. Fátima Noemí Umaña Castro. Gabriela Jamilet Sánchez Martínez. Irving Isaías. Present teacher. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Jocelyn Esmeralda Amaya Vázquez. Jose Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Present. Good. Josman Atilio Serrano. Present. Good. Karen Lisset Sánchez Castro. Catherine Indira Velázquez Castro. Present. Good. Marlon Osvaldo Pañagua Hernández. Present. Good. Rolando Antonio Cáceres Aquino. Present. Good. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Good. And Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Okay, so uh, we are going to continue and uh, hold on a second. Perfect. So this is the class of tonight. Teacher, I'm here, Irving Cruz. Uh, I'm sorry. Irving Cruz. Ah, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to start the class. Uh, okay, so this is the class number five, and this is what we're going to check tonight. Uh, review and practice, but actually we're going to check about some other things. So, uh, curriculum vital versus resume. What's the difference? Okay, so um, as we usually do when we have this kind of things, we're going to repeat, okay? So we're going to then check some vocabulary and check what is this about. So everybody please repeat. Curriculum vitae must often require Curriculum vitae must often require for higher education and research positions. 
for higher education and repair position. Demonstrate a candidate's full professional work history. Demonstrate, Demonstrate a candidate's full professional, full professional work, work history and experiences. And experiences. And experiences. Comprehensive biographical statement. Comprehensive biographical statement. Biographical statement. Focusing on professional qualifications and activities. Focusing on professional qualifications and professional qualifications. Includes more diverse experiences. Include more diverse experiences. Resume. Resume. Most commonly required for industry positions. Most commonly required for industry positions. Focuses on the candidate's strongest. Focuses on the candidate's strongest. From the strongest. Most relevant qualifications. Most relevant qualifications. Qualifications. And experiences. Demonstrate a fit. For a specific job or type of position. For a specific job or type of position. Provides a summary of educational. An experience based qualification. Okay, so let's check together, my friends. El primero es curriculum vitae, el segundo es. An experience basic education. Okay. Okay, and it says most often required for higher education and research positions. Estamos hablando del primero. Must, ¿qué era must? ¿Se acuerdan? Anybody, what is your uh, most? Okay. Vamos como a ver. Mayoría. Mayoría. Muy bien. Entonces aquí sería como mayormente, ¿verdad? en la mayor parte de los casos. Eh, y se acuerdan que era often. What is often? Eh, frecuentemente. Después. Perfecto. Entonces mayormente uh, o oh, en su mayoría frecuentemente requerido para higher education. ¿Qué es higher education? Es educación superior. Educación superior. Y luego dice en research position. ¿Qué es research? Ok. El research es investigación. Entonces, lo que dice es que el currículum vital, al menos en inglés, eh, se requiere mayormente para acciones de educación superior o de investigación. Okay. Luego dice demonstrate. Ahí hay un error, ¿verdad? No es demon, sino que es demo. Demonstrate the candidate's full professional work history and experience. Te digo que aquí no hay muchas preguntas. Sería, pues, que demuestra... El, la historia, toda la historia profesional, laboral y las experiencias del candidato. Todo, ¿verdad? aquí va todito. Y el último dice comprehensive. Eso creo que se entiende, solo que la pronunciación es comprehensive. ¿verdad? Con la H ahí, comprehensive. Biographical. Y luego dice biographical statements. O sea, que esto es como como una biografía pequeña la que se presenta en el currículum invitado. Focusing on professional qualifications and activity. Ah, pero enfocado en cualificaciones profesionales y actividades. Entonces, va como un poco más extenso, siempre enfocado en la parte laboral. ¿Ok? Ok. So, let's continue. Luego dice, includes more diverse experiences. Entonces, incluye 
todas las experiencias, ¿verdad? Una diversidad de experiencias. That will be it. Y en cuanto al siguiente, que es el resto, ¿no? Most commonly required for industry position. Entonces, esto yo diría que es un poquito más general. El resumen es como más para cualquier otra posición que no sea de higher education o research, de investigación o algo por el estilo. Entonces, es como lo que nosotros hacemos en español. Y luego dice, focuses on the candidate's strongest, most relevant qualifications and experiences. Um, ¿Qué dice ahí? Alguien que me diga una idea en sus propias palabras, ¿qué es lo que dice? Es como enfocado en las fortalezas del candidato. Very good. Entonces se enfoca en las experiencias y cualificaciones más relevantes y las más fuertes. O sea que aquí no va todito, ¿verdad? Va como lo más relevante dependiendo de lo que usted está aplicando. So that is it. Igual nosotros en español ponemos todo, ¿verdad? Todo lo que se pueda poner, lo ponemos. Eh, y luego dice, demonstrate a fit for a specific job or type of position, que es lo que les decía anteriormente. Demuestra que usted es el candidato ideal para ese tipo de trabajo o la posición a la que está aplicando. ¿Ok? So, fit. What is fit? Anybody? De ajustar, que se ajuste. Muy bien, aquí puede ser que se ajuste, que cabe, ¿verdad? Fit es algo así. And the last one, it says, provides a summary of educational and experience-based qualifications. So, summary. What is a summary? Como un índice educacional. Es como un resumen, ¿verdad? Algo comprimido, no es todito, ¿verdad? Que era lo que, lo que hablábamos, que aquí es unas cosas. Ok, y... Eh, luego dice, um, creo que esa es la única. Lo, de, lo demás, pues, está, crearía yo que claro. Eh, provee un, un resumen educacional y de experiencia basado en las calificaciones. O sea, que por eso se llama resume, porque es una versión corta de su currículum. Entonces, en inglés, un currículum es algo completo. Todo lo que quieran poner, que han hecho, las experiencias, los cursos que han tomado, whatever. Y el resume es a summary. Es como un un resumen, ¿verdad? Y se hace enfocado al, a la posición a la que estamos aplicando. Esa sería la diferencia entre uno y otro. So, let's check about some other differences. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, uh, vamos a repetirlo todo, solo para ir viendo. El resumen. Resumen. Type of document. I use document. Okay. Concise and to the point. Concise and to the point. And the CV is comprehensive and in depth. Comprehensive and in depth. Length. Length. How do I pronounce that word? Uh, yeah, length. 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 One to two pages, typically. One to two pages. Over two pages. Over two pages. Purpose. Purple. To introduce your qualifications and skills to employers. To introduce your qualifications and skills to employers. To provide detail. No, I'm sorry, one second. Chat. To provide a detailed history of your education. To provide a history of your education and professional experience and professional experience 
content. 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 A summary of professional experience. A summary of professional experience. And skills relevant to the job. And skills relevant to the job. A detailed list of academic. A detailed list of academic. And professional experience. And professional experience. When to use. When to use. To apply for jobs and or internship. To apply for jobs and or internship. To apply for academic positions. To apply for academic positions. Okay. So this chart is a comparative chart between resume and CV. So you can see that it's different. El propósito es diferente, okay? Por eso eh, tenemos que saber esto. Si algún día ustedes quieren aplicar en una compañía que sea inglesa o, o americana y le dicen, mándame su currículum vitae y le manda un resumen que es algo más corto, desde ahí no le van a llamar. O al revés, si le dicen, mándame su resumen y usted incluye todo, ¿verdad? son como cuatro o cinco páginas, desde ahí dicen ellos, no, verdad, esta persona, no, no, no. So, that's why it's very important. So, we have the type of document. The resume is concise. What is concise? Anybody knows what is concise? Consistent. 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 Very good. And to the point. And the CV is comprehensive and in depth. O sea, que el primero es conciso, cortito, y el segundo es hacia profundidad. In depth es a profundidad. Algo que se ve a detalle. Very good. Length. What is length? Okay, length sería el largo del documento. ¿Qué tan largo debe de ser? So the resume is one to two pages, typically. And the CV has more than two pages, okay? It can be four or five pages, actually. Okay, purpose, what is purpose? Propósito. Propósito, very good. So the purpose of the resume is to introduce your qualifications and skills to employers. So it's just an introduction. And the purpose of the CV is to provide a detailed history of your professional experience. So detail. Por eso es más largo. Porque está detallado todo. No se le puede olvidar. Okay, then we have content that is a summary of professional experience and skills relevant to the job. A summary. Again, this is short. Not that in depth. And the other word, the CV, is a detailed list of academic and professional experience. When to use to apply for jobs and internships. So any job is going to be the resume, any job. And uh, for academic positions is going to be the CV. So that is the difference. Entonces, esta es la diferencia entre resume y el CV, el curriculum vitae. Do you have questions? Uh, the different and the one to use, I don't understand. When to use? Yeah, because the resume is for the jobs and the academic position, uh, what is of? Yeah, academic position, let me explain you, is when you want to be a professor in a university or if you want to research, do experimentations, or uh, research about some things. Uh, and for the rest of the other jobs, it's a resume. So, uh, okay. that is it. Entonces, en inglés, ¿verdad? Recordemos que en español no, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés... Sería sí. como resumen para los oficios y el currículum es como para las plazas de oficina, en español? No. 
Eh, los, el resumen sería para cualquier trabajo, lo que sea. Y el currículum vitae en inglés es para a, posiciones, o sea, si usted quiere ser un docente en una universidad, si quiere eh, investigar, hacer un estudio de algo o algo por el estilo, ahí es un sí. currículum vitae. Ok. That is different. So, in English. Remember that this is just in English. I know that in Spanish is different, right? Good. Any other question? Eh, pues fíjese que yo acá estoy bien estable, Álvaro, eh, contestando a su pregunta ahí en el chat, ¿verdad? Y veo que los demás compañeros, pues, están bastante estables. A veces es por la lluvia o muchas otras cosas. So, espero que su internet esté bien. Ok, and these are some, uh, these are some resume templates. Entonces, en el resumen, eh, no se pueden ver bien, pero en el resumen se pone Uh, your name, it goes your name, and uh, yeah, it's because of the rain. The rain is very hard. It's very crazy, right? Raining in November. So the name, and then an objective. En el resume o en el currículum acostumbramos a poner un objetivo, el objetivo del currículum. Y para eh, ustedes vayan viendo en este, por ejemplo, en el medio, eh, lleva the experience, then the education, skills, software, and things like that. So, hay diferentes estructuras de resume. And the other one says John Smith, IT Project Manager. El objetivo siempre tiene que ir en inglés, right? And then it says personal info, experience, skills, software, languages. If we go to the other one, you are going to find different structures. So, John Smith, the objective, we have the personal information, experience, skills. So, uh, Maybe the most important when you have a resume or a curriculum is the personal information, definitely, at the beginning. Then um, an objective. That is very, very important. An objective of your resume or curriculum. And then you can decide what is most important. In my case, for example, I have first my experience, my job experience. Then I have my education. Then I have other, other uh, let's say, studies. And then I have some uh, cert uh, certifications. And then I have some uh, references, references and uh, things like that one. That's what I do. Uh, and uh, these are very good. I mean, just in case you need this, I will send you uh, the link to that. To the WhatsApp. Si en caso que ustedes quieran hacer su currículum ya en inglés y ir viendo cómo funciona, les voy a mandar este link, este es gratuito, y ustedes pueden aquí usar un template para hacer su currículum en inglés. So that is a very good. Ok, and we are going to continue with the class. So we are going to continue with the book and the unit number one. So it says this page. I will be able to talk about my work experience. Interesting, very good. And, and the first one says, let's start. How long have you worked in your company? Aha, uh -huh, people. How long? Entendemos que es how long. Do you know what is how long? Cuánto tiempo. Very good, cuánto tiempo. So how long have you worked in your company? Aha, uh -huh. I listen to you. I have four months. Four months. Yeah. Okay, very good. Perfect, Marlon. Thank you. Anybody else? How long have you worked in your company? What is the, the correct to say uh, llevo o, eten, o tengo tantos años. Depende cómo lo quiere poner. Por ejemplo, usted puede decir desde 1989, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Since, ahí se ocupa since. ¿Se acuerda que lo vimos since antes? Eh, la semana yeah. pasada. Sería yeah. since 1989. Since 
2011, algo por el estilo. O, si quiere decir la, eh, así la cantidad de años, es for, for five years, for one month, for six months. Okay, in my case, I since 2020. Since 2020, very good, perfect. Any other person that wants to share? How long have you worked in your company? For two years. Four, I'm sorry? For two years. For two years, very good. That's a lot of time, very nice. And uh, all... go ahead. Uh -huh. Se puede contestar. I have I have long ten years. Uh, no. Uh, lo que pasa es que no estamos usando esa gramática porque es un poco avanzada. Ya lo vamos a ver. Eh, pero tendría que ser. Uh, I have worked in my company for. Llegamos siempre a la misma. For one year, por ejemplo. Entonces, en este caso, se puede decir I have been. Ahí sería, si ocupa have been, tendría que ser I have been working, porque ese es continuo. Okay. 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 So we have another question. It says, have you occupied different positions in your company? Have you occupied different positions? Mm, se puede contestar como no, I use only one. Just yeah, you one. Can say, yeah, you can say uh, no, just one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good, perfect. Any other person? Yes. Yes, I have. Sí, yes, I, yes have. I have. Mm -hmm. Yes, Very I have. Yes, I have. Este, en, en office y en, en campo, ¿cómo se podría decir? Field. Campo. campo sería field. Okay. And, uh, okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing. Now we're going to go and check the conversation. So, as usual, everybody please repeat. And we're going to check first pronunciation and then uh, the vocabulary. So everybody, please repeat. Tell me about your work experience. Tell me about my work experience. Tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. From 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? And, and what, what happened, happened there? there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months. It was just for eight months. Until my project was done. Until, Until my project was done. was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. Then, then I came, I came back, back to El Salvador. Sorry. And, uh, and you have not worked since you came back? And you have and not, you have not, not worked since you came back? back? Not really. Not, Not really. really. I have done some independent jobs, you know. I have, I have done, done some independent, independent jobs, job. you know. But they have not been for long. But they, but have, they have, have not, not been, been for long. long. Very good. So, uh, pronunciation questions. Por ahorita solo pronunciación. Pronunciation questions. Mm. 
No question. ¿Cómo ah. se dice? Quit, quit, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Ah, okay. ¿Y qué significa? Quit. El significado lo vemos después, si quiere, para verlos todos. Bien. Y aquí sería quit. 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 Con C al final, quit. Ok. Offered. Inside you can o came. Uh, aquí Pulido. está. Uh, yeah. Since. Since you came. 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 Ok. okay. Any other question on pronunciation? Uh, open it, teacher. Uh, open it. Uh, let me just check. Uh, what, what's open it? Here. Open it. Eh, no, no la encuentro, no sé cuál es. Ah, está bueno, ahí. está en la de julio. Ah, es en la primera línea. De en la primera. No, julio. No, per perdón. No, perdón, entonces sería en la primera del segundo párrafo. Ah, uh, happened. Sí. Okay, what happened there? Ah. Happened. Ah, what happened? No happened. se dice happened, sino que what happened. No, happened. What happened, happened. there? Happened. Bueno, es como una de la pronunciación. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other question? No. Okay. So we are going to practice now. Let's see. Marlon, Paniagua, and Carlos Arias. Uh, I'm Julio. Mm -hmm. I'm Julio, Berta. Yes, please. Uh, tell me about your work experience. I work at Oliver uh, for five years. Actually, I work in company from 2011 to 2015, I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. Um, what happened there? I was just for a short period of time. I was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I come back to El Salvador. And you have not worked since you came back? Not really. I have done some uh, independent jobs. You know, but they have not been for long. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Now, Alvaro and uh, Salvador Bernal. Okay. I am... I am Julius. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Tell me about your work experience. I work at Unilever for five years. Actually, I work in this company from 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what's and what happens and, and, and what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have not worked science. You came back. Since. Not really. I have done some independent job, you know, but they have not been for for long. Okay, very good. Nice. Okay, so we're going to go now to uh, listen to Jennifer Torres and Edwin Quinteros. Okay, teacher. Tell me about your work experience. Eh, no le escuchamos, dice Edwin.
I don't know. Okay, good. No. Okay. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2015, 16. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. I was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I come back to El Salvador. And you have not worked and since you came back? Okay. I have done some independent jobs, you know, but they have not been. Okay, I can read the next. For long. For long. Okay, very good, perfect, very good. Uh, que recuerdo que Canning y Blanca Ruz están enfermillas, entonces no vamos a poder escucharlos, pero vamos a escuchar a Jotman en Canning Sanchez. Ok. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened in there? It was just for a short period of time. It was for just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have not worked at time and you came back? Not really. I have done some independent job, you know, but they have not been for long. Very good. Perfect. Nice. Now we're going to listen to Irving Isai, if it's possible, I don't know, and Rolando. Irving tiene okay. listener. No sé si puede. Creo que no puede Irving. Entonces sería... Yes, con... Ah, okay, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, Tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. I quit, I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have no work at science. You came to, you came back? Mm, not really. I have done some independent jobs, you know, but they have done, not been for long. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now we're gonna listen to Catherine Indira and Brenda de Villatoro. Okay. Tell me about your work experience. Uh, Catherine Indira, is it possible for you? I guess I, um, I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you had not worked in science, you came back? Not really. I have done some independent jobs, you know, but they have not been for long. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So now we're going to listen to uh, Rosa del Carmen and Jocelyn Vasquez. The impact when well, I 
Tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years, actually. I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. I feel because I was offered a new job in Panama. And what happened there? It, it was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months until my project was done, then I came back to El Salvador. And you have not worked since you came back? No, I have done some independent jobs. You know, but they have not been for long. Okay, very good, perfect. And now we're going to listen to Fatima Noemi and Gabriela Sanchez. Good night. Uh, tell me about your work experience. I worked at Unilever for five years. Actually, I worked in this company from 2011 to 2016. I quit because I was opening a new job in Panama. And what happened there? I was just for a short period of time. I was just for a month until my project was done. Then I came back to El Salvador. And you have no and you come back? Not really. I have done some independent jobs do now, but they have not been for long. Okay, very good. Perfect. Very nice, my friends. It was very good. Chequeamos algunas palabras eh, para ver pronunciación. Solo pronunciación por ahorita. Eh, esta, este es pasado, ya lo vamos a ver, ¿verdad? Work. Este se dice como con una T al final. Work. Ok. Esta, five, se tiene que escuchar la V. Five. Si no decimos la V, es como que si dijéramos en español cinco. Deme cinco de eso. Entonces es no good, right? So, five. No five, sino que five. Very important. Uh, let's see. Uh, Work again, recordemos que conté. Eh, esta la dijeron bastante bien. Quit, quit, very good. Happened, esta es como una D al final. Happened, ok. Uh, este recordemos que, bueno, permíteme. este es it, no it, ¿verdad? It, ok, let's see. Esta sí hay que tener cuidado. ¿verdad? Things no es lo mismo que science. Science es ciencia. Entonces, si yo digo science, es como que, imagínense que yo digo, eh, en lugar de decir things uh, last year, si yo dijera science last year, lo que estoy diciendo, en lugar de decir desde el año pasado, si estuviera diciendo ciencia el año pasado, así me lo va a entender. Alguien que no habla español. Entonces, es importante. Este es things. Things. That is very important. Ok. And the other ones, uh, they were good. Los demás en pronunciación estuvieron bien. But let's check some vocabulary. Ok. Um, ya vimos que este es pasado. El pasado de work. Sería trabajo. Trabajé. Ajá. ¿Cómo se pronuncia experiencia correctamente? Ok. Experience. 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 Uh -huh. Experience. Gracias. Okay, very good. Uh, it says five years. Actually, uh, let's see. What is actually, my friend? ¿Qué es actually? De hecho. De hecho. Muchas veces lo confundimos con actu actualmente, pero actualmente es currently. No es actually. Actually es de hecho. Ok, that is very important. Uh, let's see. Quit. What is quit? Mm 
Deje. Es dejar, renunciar en este caso, ¿verdad? Entonces, quit, renunciar. ¿Ok? Eh, let's see, let's do. What happened? What is happened? Haciendo de pasar, ¿verdad? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó allí? Le dice entonces. What happened? Usted llega y le pregunta a alguien, what happens? Happens, con eso. Es como, ¿qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa en este momento? So, that is it. Uh, it was just for a short period of time. It was just for eight months. Until. ¿Se acuerdan que era until? Hasta. Hasta. Hasta que mi proyecto, y luego dice, was done. Este sí nos falta un buen rato para ver este tiempo, pero aquí sería algo así como, se terminó. Hasta que el proyecto se acabó. Was done. ¿Ok? Then. What is then? Luego. 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 Entonces. Ok, very good. Eh, came es el pasado de come. Cuando veamos la, el pasado, vamos a ver por qué ahí nos llevan ED y por qué otros no. ¿verdad? Ya lo vamos a ver. De hecho, creo que la otra semana, o oh, no sé si esta semana. No, la otra, creo. Uh, then I came back to El Salvador, ¿ok? Y luego dice, you have not worked. Esto, have worked, es otro tiempo, es el presente perfecto. Eh, parece que nos falta un rato, ¿verdad? Uh, recordemos la pronunciación aquí, since, desde, came back. And really I have done some independent jobs. También este es presente perfecto. Yo he hecho algunos trabajos independientes. Uh, y luego dice for long. Cuando dice for long, ¿qué entendemos? Por mucho tiempo, pero no. Por mucho tiempo. Y como ya arriba está el negativo, entonces sería como que no ha sido por mucho tiempo. Bueno. Ok. Very good. Do you have any other questions? No. Independent, good. independent teacher. Independent. Actually, the in in, I not really. I have done some independent. 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 Any other question? Okay. Okay, very good. Now we're going to do the exercise here. It says get in pairs and discuss the answers to the questions below. De acuerdo al reading, vamos a contestar. So everybody, when did Anna start working in Unilever? Aha, uh -huh. when did Anna uh -huh. start? When did Anna start working in Unilever? For five years. Yeah, yeah. In 2011. 2011. Muy bien. Si sí, aquí, como les, le, la pregunta es cuándo inició, sería una específica, no es un periodo de tiempo, sería in. In 2011. O in 2011. That will be the answer. Okay, and luego dice, when did she stop working there? In 2016. Very good. In 2016. That is the answer. In 2016. Question number two says, why did she quit her job in Unilever? Why? Because the new job in Panama. Very good. Because she was offered a new job in Panama. Okay, because she was offered a new job in Panama. That is the answer. Okay, then the number three. Have you ever done independent jobs? Esto es para ustedes, ¿verdad? Have you ever done independent jobs? Not yet. Okay, you haven't done. Very good. Any other? In my case, yes. Okay, very interesting. Anybody else? Mm. 
Nobody else's, okay? Uh, Rolando, what was the independent job you did? I, I did, I managed a social media for a company. Oh, Nice. I created a, a content for Facebook and Instagram. Very good. Interesting. That is very nice. How long did you work in that independent job? Uh, one year. Oh, one year was a long time. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. So we're going to continue. Pero antes de ver esta parte, vamos a chequear el attendance. Okay? So let's see how it goes. Attendance check-ins. Álvaro Ernesto Alvarado Reyes. Yes, teacher. Ok, good. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martínez. Present. Good. Blanca Ruth Orantes Galdames. Teacher. Good. Brenda Jamilet Bonilla de Villa Toro. Present. Good. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Daniel Eduardo García López. Edwin Antonio Quinteros Umaña. I'm here, teacher. Good. Eulice Torres Torres. Here, teacher. Good. Fátima Noemí Umaña Castro. Yes, ma'am. Good. Gabriela Jamilet Sánchez Martínez. Good. Irving Isaí Cruz Mejía. I'm here. Good. Jocelyn Esmeralda Amaya Vázquez. Present. Good. Jose Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Present. Good. Josman Atilio Serrano. Present. Good. Karen Lisette Sanchez Castro. Present teacher. Good. Catherine Indira Velázquez Castro. Present. Good. Marlon Osvaldo Paniagua Hernández. Present. Good. Rolando Antonio Cáceres Aquino. Present. Good. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Good. In Canon Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Okay, good, perfect. Okay, so we are going to continue with the book. Nice. So let's check this little grammar. Okay, so this is going to be how to use time expression. Okay, let's repeat everybody. Repitamos. How to use time expressions. How to, How use, to use time, time expression. Use for. Time expression. Use for. Use for. Plus period of time. Plus, plus, plus period, period of time. time. I worked in Indiana for seven years. I worked in Indiana for seven years. Year. Use since. You think plus specific points in the past. Plus specific points in the past. In the past. I have worked there since 2005. I have worked, I have worked there, there since 2005. Just from. Use from. Use from. from. To stay the start and end of time. To stay the start and end of time. I 
stay there from January to November. Um, I stay, I stay there, there from, from January, January, January to November. November. January. Use then to introduce. You then to introduce a new event in a series. A new, a new, event, event, in a a new event in a series. I worked in that company until 2011. Then I quit. I worked in that company until 2011. I learned quit. Just until. Yes, until, until, until to mark the end of an activity. To mark the end of an activity. End end of the activity. Period of time. Period, of, period time. of time. I worked in Panama until my project was over. I worked, I worked in, Panama in Panama until my project was over. My project. My project. Very good. So, uh, how to use time expression? Ahora sí la vamos a revisar. For y un periodo de tiempo. Eh, ese se ocupa para decir por cuánto tiempo se ha hecho algo. Por. Ese por es for. For five years. For seven years. For one day. For five hours. Cualquier periodo de tiempo, el for no va a dar. ¿Ok? ¿Preguntas con for? ¿Qué es for? Eso es lo que estábamos viendo eh, antes, que no es que sea, sino que cómo se utiliza. En este caso lo utilizamos sí, sí, para es. hablar de un específico periodo de tiempo. Se ha hecho una actividad, por ejemplo. Se, según este, la estructura, eh, no tiene algún nombre ese. For, for. Son time expression. Time expression. Okay. Okay. Any other question before? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? <laughs> okay, so the other one says use since plus specific points in the past. Entonces, since es para hablar de un punto específico en el pasado. O sea, ese es desde. Desde el 2005, por ejemplo, ahí ya se dice, ¿verdad? Yo he trabajado ahí desde el 2005. I worked, I have worked there since 2005. Entonces, cuando queramos decir desde, ese es since. Since yesterday, desde ayer. Since last week, desde la semana pasada. Since um, I was a student, desde que era estudiante. Cualquier cosa que lleve ese desde, ese sería since. Recordemos la pronunciación since, no since. Since. ¿Ok? ¿Preguntas con since? No, teacher. Good. The other one is from. Use from to stay the start and end of time. Ahora, estos son dos, fíjense. Aquí resalta solo from, pero es from y to. Tenemos que usar los dos. Y lo vamos a utilizar cuando decimos desde cuándo hasta cuándo se hizo algo o se hace algo. From, desde, to, hasta. Por ejemplo, en este dice, I stay there from January to November. Me quedé allí desde el from, ¿verdad? Enero hasta el to, noviembre. Entonces, desde y hasta. Se puede usar solo from. O sea, yo podría decir, I stay there from January. Me quedé allí desde enero. Pero a veces se queda corta la información. Entonces, podríamos utilizar el to para poner ahí cuando se termina la acción, la actividad. Preguntas con from? Questions with from? Ok, ¿se acuerdan que era then? Entonces, o luego. Entonces, luego, ¿verdad? Entonces, esta palabra se utiliza cuando se introduce una nueva, un nuevo evento en una serie de eventos. Entonces, por ejemplo, I worked in that company until 2011. Then I quit. Yo trabajé en esa compañía hasta, estamos usando siempre lo de arriba, ¿verdad? Bueno, de abajo. Hasta el 2011. Luego renuncié. O entonces renuncié. Then. Entonces, cuando yo termino una actividad y luego digo otra. ¿Verdad? 
Eso sería then. ¿Alguna pregunta con then? No. Good. Until is very easy. Hasta. Okay. We use until to mark the end of an activity or period of time. Entonces usamos until para marcar el final, el final de una actividad que estuvimos realizando o un periodo de tiempo. For example, I worked in Panama until my project was over. Trabajé en Panamá hasta que mi proyecto se acabó. Until, hasta. Any questions with until? Sí, una duda, Until dijo que solamente al finalizar una actividad. Exacto, cuando hablamos de finalizar una actividad que se acabó. De hecho, significa hasta, ¿verdad? Igual que en español, hasta. Yo, usted okay. también lo puede usar en futuro, la verdad. Hasta el próximo mes, fíjense que viene su pedido. Until. Que él se puede utilizar. Ese hasta, eh, hasta tendría que ser ese until. Ok, gracias. Good. Any other question? No questions. Ok, very good. Now we're going to do the exercise number five. Read about Nicole's work experience and fill in the blanks using four scenes from two. Bueno, ahí dice long, aunque debería ser otro, pero hoy vamos a usar long. How long, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Read about Nicole's work experience, o sea, que es la experiencia de trabajo de Nicole. Y vamos a rellenar los blanks using four scenes from two and long. Okay? I will give you a few minutes for you to finish this activity. Okay? If you have questions, let me know.
Have you finished already? Or do you need more time? Terminamos o necesitamos más tiempo. Okay, let's Need check. Okay, perfect. Let's wait a few more minutes. Don't worry.
Okay, let's check. Let's see how it goes. I will say everything and you will tell me the blanks, okay? So, Nicole was born in San Salvador, El Salvador in 1985. She graduated from UCA University. She studied there. Since. From. Mm -hmm. Tenemos dos opciones. Since or from. 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 To. from. From, no. very good. So she studied there from 2005 to, muy mm. bien, from it to, okay, 2011. Y luego? Después de 2011. Then. 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 Very good. Then she worked in Molsa. From. From. For. For or from? For. 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 Very good. For. For seven years. Very good. Y luego? Since. Very when. Good. Eso sería since. Since she was a child, she wanted to be a manager of a great and important company. She did not have to wait much to make this dream come true because the man who was the manager uh -huh. until until uh -huh. uh -huh. como perdón hello Until. No, no es until. For? For. Very good. That is for. For almost 15 years. Por casi 15 años. Very good. Por. For. Very good. For almost 15 years, retired. His name was Gonzalo. And he worked there. Signs. Things. 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 ¿Están de acuerdo todos? Yeah. Exactamente incorrecto. No. No es mm. things. Until. Until. Ahí sí es until. <coughs> Hasta el 2015. Ajá. Very good. Until. And then it says, today, Nicole is a successful person. She works from, from Monday to, to Saturday. Two. Very good. She works from Monday to Saturday, and she loves her job. She has not worked there She has not worked there. El último, ¿cómo sería? Anymore o yet? No, no es anymore. Aunque le pega, pero no sería eso. Then? No, then. Tampoco sería then. I use for? For, no, tampoco, porque no es un periodo de tiempo. No. No. I'm sorry, ajá, ¿cuál? Mm -hmm. ¿Cuál era? Long. Long. Very long. good. Ahí va long. ¿Por qué? Porque diría algo así como, ella no ha trabajado ahí mucho, mucho tiempo. Long. For too long. Okay. Very good. But her team supports her. Very good. Nice. Very nice. Si se dan cuenta, hay que pensar un poquito a veces, pero está fácil. Entonces, ese es un buen ejercicio. Veamos algo de vocabulario aquí. Nicole was born. What is was born? Nació. Nació. 
Yeah, yeah. very good. She graduated from Uka University. She started there. She worked in Mosa for seven years. She was a child. What is child? Infancia. Niño. Niño, niño. Muy bien. Y el plural de child, ¿cuál es? Children. 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 Vea que cambia la pronunciación, ¿verdad? Child y children. Eso es importante. Eh, luego dice, she wanted to be a manager. Eh, ¿Qué era manager? Administrador. Administrador, gerente, something. Gerente. Good. Of a great and important company. She did not have to wait much to make her, uh, this dream come true. Ya, cuando dice, make this dream come true. ¿Qué dice ahí? Este, Hacer su sueño realidad. Hacer sus, este sueño realidad. Muy bien. Because the man who was the manager for almost 15 years. ¿Qué era almost? Casi. 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 Muy bien. Casi 15 años. Retire. ¿Qué es retire? Jubilado. Jubilado. Se retiró. Se jubiló. ¿verdad? Como nosotros en El Salvador. Que... Nos retiramos hasta allá cuando tenemos 80 años. His name was Gonzalo and he worked there. Uh, today, Nicole is successful. ¿Qué es successful? Exitosa. Very good. She works from Monday to Saturday and she loves her job. She has not worked that long, but her team supports her. What is team? Equipo. Mm -hmm. Team. Anybody know? Es equipo. 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 Mm, yo voy a hablar, Hola. pero no me escucho nada. No sé si mi internet está fallando. Equipo. ¿Me pueden ustedes escuchar a mí? Equipo. Yes, yes, I hear you. Let's check something. Hello, can you hear me? Ah, ahora sí escucho. Nice. Something happened. I don't know. So, uh, what is team? Equipo. Equipo. Muy bien. Sí, yo no los escuchaba. No sé por qué, pero ya arreglamos aquí. So, let's continue. Uh, it says, talk about your work experience by creating a story similar to... Eso todavía no lo vamos a hacer, pero sí lo vamos a hacer más adelante. Share. Present the story of your work. A ver... Okay, and we're going to continue with the last part of the unit. Unit one, job listing. I will be able to fill in a job application, provide specific information related to work experience. Okay, ¿se acuerdan que era fill in a job application? Llenar un formulario de trabajo. Bien, llenar un formulario de trabajo. Very good. Provide specific information ready to work. So that is not important. Number one, have a question. So, have you applied for a job position recently? Not for the moment. Not for the moment. Okay. And the rest of the people? No. Not, not for the moment. Okay, what specific information about your work experience can you provide? Anybody? What specific information about your work experience can you provide? Nobody. Okay, so let's check the, uh, we're going to check the conversation. This is a little long, but it's very easy. Vamos a chequear la pronunciación primero, como siempre. Uh, let me just check. It seems that again, I can hear you. Pueden escuchar ustedes, no sé si me escuchan. 
Yes, ah, perfecto. Yo también les escucho. Sí, pensé que no. Ok, so. Uh, vamos a explicar primero la posición. Yo digo, ustedes repiten. Luego, pronunciation questions y luego vocabulario. Ok. So, everybody, please repeat. What is your social security number? What is your social security number? It's 3456-3245-7865. dash when were you born? When were you born? I was born in on July 1st. I was born on July 1st. Where did you work? Where did you work? I worked in Malta. I worked in Malta. What did you do there? What did you do there? I was the evening manager. I was the evening manager. When did you work there? When did, when, you, did you, when did you work there? I was, uh, I'm sorry, from 2005 to 2011. From 2005 to 2011. Do you have a university diploma? Do you have, you have a university diploma? diploma? Yes, I do. I have a BBA. Yes, I, yes, do. I do. I have a BBA. BBA. Do you have any chronic medical condition? Do you, Do you have, have any chronic, chronic medical, medical condition? condition? Yes, I do. I have hypertension. Yes, I, I do. do. I have, I have hypertension. hypertension. Okay, pronunciation questions. Do you have any pronunciation questions? El guión, teacher. Ah, perfecto. El guión sería dash. Any other pronunciation question? It's correct the pronunciation. Do you uh, do you have any chronic? It's correct that. Uh, chronic, chronic medical condition. Hypertension. 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 Hypertension, yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. Any other pronunciation question? No more pronunciation questions. Okay. This is un poco fácil, la verdad. Okay, we're going to practice then the conversation, okay? So, let's see. Álvaro and Eulice Torres. Okay. Who is Tar teacher? Ah, Álvaro. Álvaro empieza. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. What is your social security number? It's uh, 3456-3245. 78654. When were you born? When were you born? I was born on July 16th. I don't know. Uh, it's the um, first. First. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Where did you work? I worked in Molsa. What did you do there? I was there. I was the evening manager. When did you work there? From 25 to 2011. Do you have a university diploma? Diploma? Yes, I. Yes, I do. I have a B B B B A. Do you have? Any chronic medical condition? 
Yes, I do. I have hypertension. Hypertension. Very good. Okay, perfect. Very nice. Now we're going to listen to Carlos Arias and Salvador Bernal. Um, Carlos. What is your social security number? It's three, four, five, six, three, two, four, five, seven, eight, six, five, four. When were you born? I was born on July 1st. Where did you born? I work in Malta. What did you do? I was the evening manager. When did you work there? From 25 to 2011. Do you have a university diploma? Yes, I do. I have I have a BBA. Do you have a uh, any clinical medical condition? Yes, I do. I have hypertension. Very good, perfect. Now we're gonna listen to Jennifer Torres and Karen Rivas. Okay, teacher. What is your social security number? It's 34-56-32-45-28-65-4. When were you born? I was born on July 1st. Where did you work? I worked in Molsa. What did you do there? I was the evening manager. When did you work there? From 2005 to 2011. Do you have a university diploma? Yes, I do. I have a BBA. Do you have any chronic medical condition? Yes, I do. I have hypertension. 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 Okay, very good, perfect. Now we're going to listen to, let's see, Edwin Antonio and Josh Manserrano. Hey, teacher. Who is that? Uh, you can start. Okay. What is your social security number? It's three, four, five, six. Three, two, four, five, that's seven, eight, six, five, four. When were you born? I was born in July 1st. Where do you work? I work in Balsa. What did you do there? I squat the evening manager. When did you work there? From 20, 25 to 2011. Do you have a university plan? Yes, I do. I have a BBA. Do you have any chronic medical condition? Yes, I do. I had a hypertension. Very good, perfect. Now we're going to check with Karen Sanchez and Irving Isai. Hello. I'm here. Karen, Karen Sanchez. Okay, it's not possible for Karen. So 
Rolando Cáceres le va a ayudar a Irving Isaí. Ok. Ok, Mr. Rolando, ¿cuál es tu social security number? Es 3456324 How do you say the guión? Dash. Dash. 78654 When were you born? I was born on July 1st. Where did you work? I worked at in Molson. What did you do there? I was the evening evening manager. When did you work there? From when did you work there? From sorry. Twenty oh five. From two thousand five to two thousand eleven. Do you have a university diploma? Yes, I do. I have a PM, BBA. And do you have any chronic medical condition? Yes, I do. I have a hypertension. 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 Good, yes. perfect. Now we're going to listen to um, Catherine Indira and Carlos Arias. Creo que Carlos no ha pasado, ¿verdad? Okay. Ya pasé, pero puedo pasar otra Ah, ok, va. vamos a esperar. Quizás entonces sería Catherine Indira y Brenda de Villatoro. Ok. What is you? Ah, ok. Who is start? Ok. What is your social security number? It's 3456-3245. I, I forgot how do you say guión. Dash. Okay. Dash seven eight six five four. When were you born? I was born on July first. Where did you work? I worked in Molsa. What did you do there? I was the evening manager. When did you work there? From 2005, it's correct to say. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. From 2005 to 2011. Do you have a university diploma? Yes, I do. I have a, I can say BBA. BBA, yeah. BBA. Do you have uh, a chronic? Mm -hmm. Chronic medical condition? Yes, I do. I have hypertension. How do you say? I don't know. Hypertension. Hypertension. Okay, very good. Perfect. Now, Rosa del Carmen and let's see, Fatima Noemi. What is your social security number? Hello, Fatima. Not possible. Bueno, aquí sí le va a ayudar entonces Carlos, Carlos Arias. Where were you born? I was born on July 5th. Where did you work? I work in Malta. What did you there? I was the evening manager. When did you work there? From 2005 to 2011. 
to 2011. Do you have a UX system? Yes, I do. I have a BBA. Do you have any chronic medical condition? Yes, I do. I have hypertension. Okay, very good, perfect. So, very nice, everybody, uh, and the pronunciation and everything was very good. Let's check some things, okay? Um, let's see. Mm, creo que casi todo estuvo bien. Yeah, quizás la última nada más, hypertension, pero de ahí lo demás, it was a very good job. Okay, you know what is the social security number, so that is not a problem. But el guión, eh, hay dos nombres, le podemos decir dash o le podemos decir hyphen. Cualquiera de los dos is fine. Uh, este es first. Eh, Ustedes ya vieron los números ordinales in English. Yes, teacher. Okay. First, second, third. Okay, nice, very good. First. Uh, let's see what else. Evening manager, what is that? Algo así como el gerente nocturno. Very good. When did you were there? So, Okay, uh, BBA, ese sería un uh, Bachelor in Business Administration. And chronic, igual que en español, crónico. En hypertension, que también es hipertensión. Creo que no hay otras, pero si tienen alguna pregunta, do you have any questions here in this conversation? No questions. Nice. Let's check the uh, uh -huh. question, teacher. Uh -huh. uh, ¿Qué significa born? Ah, okay. Uh, ¿Cuándo naciste? When were you born? Born, naciste. Born, born, naciste. No. Were you born no. and naciste? Tiene que ir todo junto. Where you born? Mm -hmm. Bueno. Okay. Any Thank other question? Okay, so now we're going to do the questions according to the reading. It says, what kind of education does Blanca have? Mm -hmm. What kind of education does Blanca have? Anybody? BBA. She has a BBA, yeah, that is the answer. She has a BBA, a university diploma, okay? And number two, what other type of job could Blanca have in the company? Uh -huh. What other kind of job can have uh, can Blanca have in the company? Evening man. I'm sorry. Evening manager. She can be a, an evening manager or a manager, just a manager, right? Very good. Perfect, very good. So let's go to the last part. Este es un ejemplo, verdad? So ask your classmates questions to complete these job applications. So uh, this is for you to practice. And let's check first this one, okay? Uh, let me check what is next. Ah, oh, it's already, okay. We're not gonna finish the reading today. So this is an application for employment. So what we are going to do, eh, lo que vamos a hacer es esto. Vamos a chequear primero el formulario. Pues el formulario que lleva es el date, que sería el date de ahora, ¿verdad? Position applied for, name, address, phone number, sex, male or female, date of birth, social security number, 
and then the driver's license. So do you have a driver's license? Yes or no? And then we have employment uh, history, date of employment, name of the company, address, job titles, and duties or tasks. And then the education, degree obtained, institution, and date. Do you have any questions with the form? ¿Alguna pregunta con este form? Ok, no vamos a hacer la actividad porque la verdad es algo que vamos a hacer más adelante. Vamos a, al finalizar el módulo, vamos a tratar de hacer una entrevista de trabajo en inglés. So, uh, vamos pensando eso, ¿verdad? Vamos pensando qué vamos a decir. Entonces, eh, va a ser general, no es para una posición específica. That is a good practice, ¿ok? So, I have a question for you. What is a job profile? What is that? What is a job profile? El perfil del trabajo. Un perfil de trabajo. Very good. So that is a job profile. So, uh, and what is inside of a job profile? What information is there in the job profile? Anybody has an idea? Repeat the question, please. Yeah, what do you see in the job profile? Oh, the abilities for the job. Very good. So requirements, right? Skills, abilities that you can, that you need for you to do the job position. So let's speak about that one. Vamos a hablar un poquito de eso. What are, what is an ability? Algunas habilidades. Very good. And what are the skills? Anybody knows what is skills? For example, analysis. Analysis is a skill. Very good. So uh, there are abilities and skills that you can find in a job profile for you to apply for that one. So that is also very important. Okay, so that was the class of tonight, but before we're going to do a practice. So, como ya terminamos, no vamos a hacer reading, lo vamos a hacer hasta mañana. Hagamos práctica libre, a ver cómo nos va, okay? So let's see, I'm going to speak today with Edwin Anton. Hi, teacher. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thanks for asking. Ah, it's a pleasure. And tell me, um, where are you from? I'm from Lourdes, Colón. Lourdes, how are you? you? I am from Santa Ana. Nice. Yeah, we're kind of far away. Is it raining there in Lourdes right now? No, no, but... Since moment, uh, it's raining. It was raining. Really? Was it's crazy, right? The weather is crazy. It's raining. I don't know. It's kind of strange. And uh, where do you work? I work in next for Salva, free zone. Okay, very in good. Lourdes. Lourdes. Very good. And um, do you work on Saturdays? Sorry, I, I didn't hear you. Oh, yeah. Do you work on Saturdays? No, I don't. Okay, very good. So you rest. That is very nice. And uh, what time do you start your job? I start my job at 7... Uh, sorry, uh, quarter past seven. A quarter. Um, uh -huh. And what time do you finish your job? Um, 
quarter to 5 p.m. Okay, a quarter to five. So that is good. It's a nice schedule. Sounds very good. Perfect. Thank you, Edwin. See you. See you too. Okay, nice. Tenemos chance de uno más. A ver. Uh, uh, um. Rolando. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I am very well also, very nice. Okay. And uh, where are you from? I am from Antigua, Cuscatlán. Ah, okay, very good. And uh, where do you work? I work in the company, the Corporation Saint Germain. Corporation, what is the name of the corporation? Corporation Saint Germain. Saint Germain. Yes. Oh, interesting. And what do you do there? I I am the I work in marketing there. Okay. And advertisement. Nice. nice, very interesting. And the company, what does the company do? Sorry, repeat. Yes. Repeat. What does what does the company do? What products or services does the company do? Oh yeah. The company do uh, cosmetic and and how do you say hygienicos? Hygienic. Hygienic products like uh, hand sanitizers, uh, uh uh, what else? Uh, 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 la, la for products for laundry and the disinfections and and things like that. So to to the to the household and the and the and the home care. Oh, it sounds very interesting. So you do a lot of products. Yeah. And I am I do the marketing for a lot of the supermarkets, the the things that to to sell the product. Okay, very good, perfect, nice. And uh, how many people uh, do work there in the company? Do you have an idea? It's around, I think it's around 200 people. Mm, 200, that is a lot of people. Okay. And for you, yeah, to, it's a lot of people. for you to create the products, I mean, do you use people or do you use um, machines? Both of that. That but uh, some with people and some for machines. Uh, for example, when you need to 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 put the the labels on the on the bottles. Sometimes it's people and sometimes are machines. In my that sounds very interesting. And also the for the machines, they need people to 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 manage to management the, the machines, right? Okay. Yeah, definitely, right? You need somebody there in the controls yeah. of the equipment. Yeah, that is. And do you work on Saturdays? No. No, I don't. Very good. That is very nice. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Rolando. Thank you. Okay. Siempre que tengamos chance, vamos a hacer conversaciones así, random, verdad, para ver qué tal, qué tal va el asunto. Okay. Um, do you have any questions before we finish by now? No. 
Ok, very good. Now, um, siempre creo que hubo una confusión, no sé qué pasó, yo, yo pues pensaba que en los otros grupos lo hacían, pero al finalizar la clase yo paso lista y siempre digo al quien le toca el one on one. Los one on one son al final de la clase, usted se queda 10 minutos y vemos si tiene preguntas, si tiene dudas, si me quiere contar lo que hizo en el día, si um, quiere practicar en inglés. Para eso sirven los one on one. Entonces le hago la aclaración porque no sé si... O sea, ni una vez se ha quedado nadie, ¿verdad? Siempre digo, ahora le toca el one on one a alguien. Y es como que salud, nos vemos. ¿verdad? Y yo digo, pues están cansados, ¿verdad? Ya, ya, ya van a dormir. O están ocupados. Entonces yo me quedo aquí, pero, pero si usted no se quiere quedar, no hay problema. Ahora el objetivo es... Es eso, ¿verdad? Que si tiene preguntas, ya individual, ya puede ser difícil que yo me siento, que me cuesta pronunciar esta palabra o, o algo por el estilo. Ese es el objetivo de los one-on-ones. Entonces, todos tienen one-on-one, pero vamos así como en el orden que paso lista. Si ustedes se fijan, yo digo el primero, ese es el primero que le tocaba y así vamos, ¿verdad? Entonces... Hago la aclaración y yo pensaría que antes han tenido one on one, no sé si lo tenían o no lo tenían, ¿verdad? pero si no lo tenían, ahora tenemos one on one, ¿verdad? acá en, el, en este tipo de inglés. Y pues vamos a, si ustedes pues, si un día alguien no está, si yo digo le toca, I don't know, any person, y no está esa persona, me puede decir alguien, me puedo quedar yo, ¿verdad? y se puede quedar, ¿verdad? no hay ningún problema. Entonces, yo siempre digo, y pues si se quiere quedar y se puede quedar, es welcome. Son solo 10 minutitos, hasta las 10 y 10 en punto. Ok, so my friends, aclarando ese punto en español, por si acaso. We are going to check the attendance. So, let's see how it goes. Álvaro Ernesto Alvarado Reyes. Present teacher. Good. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martínez. Present teacher. Blanca Ruth Orantes Galdames. Brenda Jamelet. Good. Brenda Jamelet Bonilla de Villa Toro. Present teacher. Good. Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez. Daniel Eduardo, okay. Daniel Eduardo García López. Edwin Antonio Quinteros Umaña. Present teacher. Good. Eulice Torres Torres. Present. Good. Fátima Noemí Umaña Castro. Gabriela Jamilet Sánchez Martínez. Irving Isaí Cruz Mejía. I'm here. Good. Jocelyn Esmeralda Amaya Vázquez. José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Presente. Good. Josman Atilio Serrano. Present. Good. Karen Lisette Sánchez Castro. Catherine Indira Velázquez Castro. Present. Good. Marlon Osvaldo Paniagua Hernández. Rolando Antonio Cáceres Aquino. Present. Good. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Good. Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present teacher. Good. El one one de ahora le toca a Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I have, I hope you have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Dreaming English. See you tomorrow, see you tomorrow, tomorrow everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.
Hello, do you have questions or anything like that? No questions, teacher. Okay, perfect. Bueno, si no hay, si no está quien está, no puedo quedar. Okay, perfecto. Vamos a a quitar aquí a los compañeros que se han quedado cortados, permítame. Ok. Eh, bueno, como les comentaba, ¿verdad? Los one on one son como para, para si tiene preguntas o dudas de la plataforma o del curso o palabras, vocabulario o gramática que hayamos visto pues en este curso o antes, ¿verdad? Cualquier cosa de inglés que tenga preguntas, dudas, pues estos 10 minutos son para para eso, así como usted que eh, va a estar ahorita, también va a tener su one-on-one, -on -one. o sea, cuando ya lleguemos a su turno, se puede volver a quedar, no hay ningún problema. Eh, ¿Tiene alguna pregunta o duda para empezar? Bueno, yo sí lo que un poquito me cuesta más que toda la pronunciación del pasado. Ah, eh, okay. Eso es lo que sí me cuesta un poco más. A veces tengo la palabra, pero siempre trato, por ejemplo, el agregar el ED, el work ed, por ejemplo. Pero ah. es diferente. Ah, y ahí es donde me cuesta. Es, y esa es la que me cuesta un poco más. Ah. Esa un tipo de pronunciación. Y lo demás, pues, es más que todo aprender palabras nuevas día a día. Como usted dice, anotarlas, escribirlas. Y hablarlo, tratar de... Sí, es un proceso, la verdad. Y la verdad es que el pasado cuesta, la verdad. Porque no hay una fórmula, ¿verdad? O sea... Y usted sabe que hay regulares e irregulares. No lo hemos visto, ya lo vamos a ver. De hecho, lo vamos a ver en este curso. Entonces, hay regulares e irregulares. Y los regulares, los que llevan ED, tienen tres tipos de pronunciación. A veces es con D, a veces con ED y a veces es con T. ¿Cómo voy a saber yo cómo es? Aprendiéndolo, ¿verdad? Nada más, no hay otra manera. Ahora, también es un proceso, ¿verdad? Yo creo que una de las cosas que yo le recomiendo mucho a las personas es que si algo le cuesta, hay que practicarlo, ¿verdad? Escuche, vea videos, eh, puede grabarse usted también, y, o sea, no tiene que, no tiene que aprender eso todo de un solo. Si eso es lo que le cuesta y es lo que quiere aprenderse, puede agarrarse unos dos verbos diarios, por ejemplo, estos dos, y los carga en su mente, cómo se dice, cómo se pronuncia, eh, hace oraciones con ellos ahí, mientras va caminando, mientras va manejando, ¿verdad? Dos, que agarre diarios, y le digo que se lo va a aprender. Entonces, así de a poquito, metiéndolos en el, en el diario vivir, esa es la mejor manera. Y uh, en cuanto al curso, siente que ha ido, son, sé que son pocos días, pues, pero no sé si siente que ha aprendido algo, si hemos avanzado. Sí, sí, no, la verdad, sí. Bueno, algunas cosas ya las hemos visto en otro, otro módulo, ¿verdad? Pero sí, por ejemplo, el la gramática que usted utiliza, pues, o, bueno, igual con el tiempo se puede escuchar más, porque estábamos una hora nada más. Uh -huh. eh, queda un poquito más para practicar, para preguntar. Y la clase se entiende mejor a que se vea un, un tema rápido, ¿verdad? en un solo día. A tener dos horas en un día se aprende un poquito más. ¿verdad? Pero sí, sí ahorita uh -huh. no lo contrario. No, pues, perfecto. El asunto es eso, ¿verdad? El asunto es tratar de aprovechar. Eh, lo que se tiene, pues ya que en primer lugar es una beca y pues no se paga nada y en segundo lugar es un es, es una oportunidad muy grande ¿verdad? porque aprender inglés es, es algo que le abre puertas a uno, mire para todo yo le digo por experiencia a todos los compañeros le digo cuando estamos en las clases verdad yo tengo mi carrera, yo tengo mucha experiencia, muchas cosas, pero el inglés es, se abre puertas, verdad, y yo creo que al principio se lo decía, ¿verdad? hay que aprender inglés y Excel si uno aprende esas dos cosas en la vida, le va a ir maravillosamente. Totalmente de acuerdo. Perfecto. ¿Alguna otra pregunta en gramática? ¿Algo que hayamos visto? o ¿Alguna otra situación? No, no. No, todo bien por el momento. Y más Perfecto. que todo práctica, es lo que se requiere. Exacto. Yo lo que les recomiendo también a todos es que en el momento que yo les diga, ¿y usted qué piensa? O cuéntame usted, hay que lanzarse a hablar, ¿verdad? Y es, ese Exacto. es el chance. ¿Verdad? Porque en el día a veces no tenemos chance con nadie más, entonces ahí hay que, hay que tratar y si se equivoca, lo corregimos y ahí nos vamos. ¿verdad? Sí, es algo que he tomado casi como unos tres, cuatro semanas. Por ejemplo, cuando usted dice voy manejando para el trabajo, pues ir hablando yo solo. Parece como que uno es loco, pero 
uno va hablando lo que va a hacer en el día, que lo que ha hecho, lo que va a hacer, y de repente hay una palabra que uno quiere decir, y esta como sea, se dice, va. Ya la llevo en mente, ah, esta palabra no me la puedo. Ya cuando llego al trabajo la anoto y un ratito o a la hora del almuerzo la escribo y a la, ah, eso es así. Pero como de repente uno el vocabulario, ¿verdad? entonces el vocabulario igual se va aprendiendo día a día, pero sí, también quitarse el miedo al hablar, ¿verdad? porque es la única forma. Equivocándose creo que se va aprendiendo. Definitivamente, y lo que hace es algo muy bueno, fíjense que la gente, la mayoría de gente, al menos en El Salvador, no, ¿verdad? Es como que viene a la clase, lo entiendo, ya sé cómo se dice, pero si no lo practico, allá en un mes se me ha olvidado, pues. Entonces, Exacto. esta es una recomendación que sí es muy buena, y usted puede, ajá, ir pensando en inglés, ir pensando, tengo que cocinar y sacar de la refri el pollo, todo eso en inglés, y si de repente se encuentra una palabra que no sabe cómo decirla, Va a la busca, la aprende y la empieza a usar. Y esa es la mejor manera. Exacto. Así que ahí estamos. Dicho, gracias por los, por los tips. No, gracias estamos, por, la... por supuesto, es un gusto. Estaremos en contacto y see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night, Dicho. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.